What is up YouTube? Today I'm coming back at you with another video and today's video is a little bit different. Um, today I just wanted, this is something I've been wanting to do for a little while just to, you know, kind of prove a point I guess. And uh, what today's video is, is how useful is an 11 year old laptop? Um, this is a Dell Latitude D830. Um, so this laptop came out in 2007, I know, like in the summer of 2007, and it's a business grade laptop. It's uh, all aluminum, and uh, we're just going to see how well it functions as a day-to-day -day machine in 2018. And um, so let's just do a little bit of an overview of it, and then I'll get right into the performance, and I'll do some recording of me uh, doing various different tasks on it, and then we'll see how well it performs, and uh, if you should get something this old or not. Um, now, the reason for this video in the first place is I see a ton of people always buying brand new laptops and um, always looking to get laptops on a, on a cheap budget, and uh, I think that older laptops are a great idea because, number one, if you're, up if you're upgrading your laptop every year, you're not really getting a whole lot of performance increases. Um, in fact, I have a ThinkPad X220, and that processor in that ThinkPad X220, which is an i7-2620, I think, and its processor is just about as good as my main laptop that came out in uh, 2014 or 2015, and it's, so it's like two or three years behind, uh, but the processor is practically the same level as my current laptop just because it's an i5-5200U. So processor technology hasn't really had a huge leap forward until very recently and that's the uh, the new 8th generation uh, core i5, i7, i9s and they've pretty much been very small increment upgrades until now. And now that we have these new processors I wanted to see how well an old processor like this uh, this uses, use, is using a Intel Core 2 Duo, um, and I wanted to see how well that performs in today's world with um, the now 4-core, 6-core um, Core i series. And this has a, two cores with no hyper-threading, so it's just a standard dual-core system. Now, I did do some upgrades to this. Uh, this computer is completely maxed out in terms of specs, pretty much. It's got a, uh, it's got the Core 2 Duo. It's got four gigs of DDR2 RAM. That's as fast, that's as much as you can put in here. And I have a SSD in here that I upgraded. It's a 128 gig SSD. Uh, not gonna really need any more than that for this laptop. And I also am not using Windows on here because I'm trying to get the most performance out of this machine. I'm gonna be using Lubuntu 18.04 and that should give me the most performance. Um, I already loaded it on here and uh, tested it out. Uh, we're looking at, uh, on idle on the desktop, we're looking at, I think it was uh, 297 megabytes of RAM used. So that's way less than Windows. I think Windows idles around a gig and a half to uh, two gigs, I believe, is what it idles at on my normal machine. So, um, should be getting at least decent performance with this, but let's get right into it and see how useful this machine really is, um, but oh, before we get into that, let's do the ports real quick. And this is not this is not a review, so we're not going to go too in depth in the ports. Um, we have this port that I have no idea what it is. It says uh, one three nine four port. Not sure what that is. Uh, we got a microphone, headphone jack. We've got a um, express card slot. We've got a Wi-Fi toggle switch, PC card slot, Kensington lock two USBs on the back, a DVD drive bay, we've got VGA and serial, we've got a phone modem, we've got ethernet, we've got a, what looks like a S-video out, and a USB SATA uh, bus on the back. So, um, that's pretty much everything that's on here. One nice thing about old laptops like this is they are highly upgradable. Um, on the back here you have access to your RAM slot, uh, one of your RAM slots. You have access to your hard drive that I that upgraded here. Um, you also have a removable battery, so lots of upgradability that's really easy to access. So let's pause the video 
and go into the performance of this and see how well it handles day-to-day -day tasks. Alright, so now we are on the desktop here. Um, I was going to do this uh, as a screen recording, but I was having some audio issues. Um, this computer doesn't like my combo uh, speaker headphone combination in the microphone port, so um, my just going to have to do it as the good old fashioned point the camera at the screen. Um, but uh, hopefully it should be alright. So here we are, we're on the desktop here, and let's empty this trash can real quick. And um, as you can see, everything is you know running pretty fluidly. We have our menu down here. We have multiple different applications installed. Um, you have your uh, trash here. Uh, I don't really have much on the desktop. You can open up files. Um, don't really have anything in there either. But uh, let's just get into some daily tasks and what you can cannot do. So um, let's open up the default. Um, Office program that comes with Lubuntu, and um, that is Abby Word. This is a lightweight. Um, actually, before we get into that, let's open up the terminal, and we'll look at um, what kind of specs we're working with. So, so we'll type in the screen fetch, and we got our uh, our specs right here. So, we have uh, Ubuntu 18.04, which is what Lubuntu is based off of, so uh, that's the current version of it. We have um, our Intel Core 2 Duo T7250 uh, running at 2 gigahertz, currently sitting at 38 degrees Celsius. Um, we have our NVIDIA Quadro NVS135M and we have um, our 4 gigs of RAM, so there's that. Now let's open up currently as we're sitting idle. Actually, we'll close this. And then we'll, as we're sitting idle here, let's see how much memory we're using. So we have about 1%, of, uh, not even 1%, about 0.7 to 2% as it fluctuates of CPU usage on the desktop while this is running. That's pretty much it. And we're currently using 259 megabytes of RAM. 259 megabytes of RAM. Uh, that is uh, that's about a quarter of a gig. So we are really not running very high end at all, uh, which is nice. Um, so it should run pretty smoothly. So let's open up Abbey Word and now let's get into it. So Abbey Word is the default um, document typing program that comes on Lubuntu. It's not my personal favorite, but it is very lightweight. It's very responsive. And um, as you can see, it, it works perfectly fine. And it does have, oops, wrong button. It does have font scaling. So as you increase the size of the window, if I can grab it here, it should uh, make the font bigger. Um, basically, it just scales it to the rest of the page. Um, so if you want to type in a very small window, oops, not that small, you can type in a small window like this, or you can do full page type. Um, as you can see here, I have the Microsoft fonts installed, so it's going to be 100% compatible with um, the Microsoft fonts. And uh, you can also save in um, uh, an Abbey word you can't save in a dot, uh, .docx, you can only save in dot .doc. So you can't use .docx with this program, which is one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of it, but you can use uh, ODT or um, I believe you can save as PDF as well, and you can save as the default Abbey word um, file. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you can install other Office software. This one's not as light weight as Abbey Word, but Office programs aren't very heavy anyways, so uh, this is the one I prefer to use. This is called LibreOffice. Now this can save as docx and doc, and it can also save as ODT as its default format, and a bunch of other different formats as well. So there you go. There's a typing test, and as you can see, it's very really responsive and uh, you should be able to do all your typing with this. And this is a little bit more fully featured than Abbey Word. Uh, it runs a little bit heavier, and let's, you know what, let's actually compare how much heavier this one runs 
because um, we are running with very low specs in terms of modern standards. So right now, um, we are currently using uh, 371 megabytes of RAM and about uh, 2 to 3 percent of our CPU usage. And let's get a little bit more specific there and um, see if we can't expand that. Um, we're going to do memory. What's using the most? Uh, LibreOffice is using about 5.2% of the memory, uh, and it's 374 megs. And um, let's see. Uh, the next, the next biggest thing would be the 2.4% for the uh, actual desktop environment. So we have about uh, while using LibreOffice, we're at about 373 megabytes of RAM. So let's close that and we'll see how light uh, Abbey Word runs. So we'll do full full screen with that one as well. And uh, and let's see, we'll have the same thing typed out. And we're actually running about 60 megs less RAM. So it is a lighter word processing program, about uh, one 1.5% CPU usage to 2 max, so it's about 1% less CPU usage and about 60 megabytes less of RAM. So, um, and they're using the same font and everything. So there is a difference there. And we'll close that as, out as well. So now let's open up YouTube. Um, first we'll mute our audio to make sure that we don't get any copyright strikes. And we'll open up Firefox and um, we'll go to YouTube and uh, play a video and we'll see how well video playback goes because that's something else that people really like to um, use. Let's open up this Home Pets bot. And I should mention that I have ads turned on just for the sake of seeing how fast this loads. This is running off of my home Wi-Fi. Cannot connect to my five gigahertz signal. Uh, can only connect to the two gigahertz signal. So um, speeds in terms of Wi-Fi are a little slow and the processing power is also is gonna be a, lot, a bit less because this is a Core 2 Duo. Um, let's open up HTOP while doing this just so we have our full CPU usage. So we're using about uh, half a gig of RAM now, uh, about 632 megs of RAM. Our CPU usage is probably about, um, after when it, while it was loading in, we were about 80% on one core and about 30% uh, on another core. Once everything's loaded in here, we're about 30% on both cores, roughly. So. Uh, that's pretty much how that's going, and this is a video ad that we've been graced with, so that's a little bit more intensive of an ad. Uh, so let's open up um, Home Pet Spa Test, and um, we'll go full screen video here. And this is uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, so this computer, uh, 60 frames per second video, even at 720p, is not going to happen. So let's not let's back out of this video because 60 frames per second is not happening. So let's go and open up uh, how to cook a cheap steak. And we'll just full screen this video. And we are currently running at if it will show me here. So the ad is in here can't currently click on this. Okay, there we go. We're at 720p. So we've got 720p video. We have the ad running as well. And uh, 720p video, as you can see, running perfectly fine. And we'll, we'll fast forward here a little bit and see how well it handles that. So fast forwarding seems to be working pretty, pretty well. We, our screen resolution is only 1200 by 800, so 720p is really gonna be the max resolution you're gonna even need to play anyways. Uh, but let's bump it up to 1080p to get the little bit of extra pixel density that this screen can handle um, and see how well that handles a 1080p video. So 1080p video, uh, while not doing anything else, this is just playing one 1080p video in one tab. Um, you do have a little bit of stuttering here uh, at first, uh, but once it starts to buffer the frames, uh, it seems to be working all right. Um, doesn't seem to be having many issues. There's a bit of screen tearing going on with the 1080p video, um, but that's pretty much it. You can play 1080p video. And uh, we'll just switch it back to 720p because that's probably what you're going to want to use it at anyways. And the 720p video is playing flawlessly. So, uh, like I said, 720p video, not 
not bad. And our ads are loading here. So let's do, while this is open, we are currently uh, doing at about uh, 827 megabytes of RAM. So a little bit more RAM now being used. Uh, still haven't hit that one gig mark. And to put that into perspective, Windows 10 Home uh, uses about one and a half to two gigs of RAM idling on the desktop. And that's been uh, across pretty much any system that I put it on. I have about five or six laptops. They all pretty much idle at Windows 10 about one and a half to two gigs of RAM. Um, CPU usage is about 40% uh, on both cores uh, while playing the 720p video with ads. So let's try to do some multitasking and see how well it can handle that. So we're going to open up some more tabs here because uh, a lot of people like to open up multiple tabs. While this video is playing in the background with ads on, we're going to open up Wikipedia. We're going to open up another tab, open up Amazon. We're going to open up a fourth tab, open up Reddit. And our fifth tab is the grand finale. We're going to try to op open up CNN.com, which is super bloated with ads. So um, as you can see, uh, Wikipedia has loaded, Amazon is loaded, Reddit is currently pretty much fully loaded, and CNN is pretty much currently fully loaded. And we're still playing our 720p video perfectly fine in the background here. Um, let's open up an, a specific article. Uh, let's do the Nelson Mandela article. And we'll uh, pull up in a, uh, an instance of Abby Word. And we'll uh, make this a little bit bigger. And we'll just type in some text here. And uh, let's insert a table make it a little bit more intensive here. A little bit more intensive Word document going on there. Um, these are all loaded up fine. Our video is still playing in the background. Let's open up, um, I don't know, let's do Yahoo, Yahoo's uh, web page because they have a bunch of ads and news and stuff on there as well. We'll open up, um, uh, what do we've got here? Let's just open up BuzzFeed, I'm sure that's going to be great on this CPU as well. So Yahoo's loaded up here. Um, BuzzFeed's currently kind of loading. And um, these are still currently loading. And what are we doing on CPU usage? We're about uh, 1.6 gigs of RAM usage, usage. Currently, while it's trying to load those two pages, we're at about 90% on, 90 to 80% on both cores. Um, so we're still, we're still holding in there pretty pretty well with all those tabs open, plus the video playing, plus the uh, Abby Word document being opened up as well. Uh, now that the BuzzFeed is loaded, we're dropping massively in core usage. We're down to 40% core usage, 50% core usage. And Yahoo is still trying to load something, probably an advertisement somewhere. Um, but uh, still have quite a bit of stuff to work with here. And our video still playing perfectly fine. So um, let's open up uh, the default uh, spreadsheet editor, GNumeric. We'll type in some text here. And Yahoo is fully loaded now. And let's open up HTOP, see how we're doing. We're about uh, 1.67 gigs of RAM, 50% core usage on, on both cores. And um, we're doing pretty well. And honestly, this is hold holding its own very well. Um, everything is running perfectly fine. Um, let's uh, try to, let's try to do something a little crazy here. We're going to load open a, a game as well, not a super demanding game, just a, a, a version of Breakout, and let's try to play some Breakout while this is all running as well. So, as you can see, Breakout is currently running. I'm, and uh, it's running all right. Uh, let's try to load a game that maybe runs a little bit faster here. Uh, use uh, K Gold Runner. It is a clone of Load Runner. And let's try to open up a new game. We'll do this one. And um, we'll start this one up. So um, I obviously suck at this game, so that didn't work. Uh, new game, something. Let's do this one. So here we are at a New game of this, and as you can kind of, you might not be able to see, but it is currently running perfectly fine. The video is still running in the background, and 
we're about at 1.7 gigs of usage, still about 50% on both cores. Um, let's see how our temperature is doing. So let's open up an instance of the terminal and see how our core, use, our core temp is doing. Our core temperature is about 50 degrees Celsius, so not even that stressed out um, in terms of thermals. Um, let's minimize that and uh, let's try to, uh, I don't know, let's open up a new video because that one just didn't work. I mean, that one ended. And um, now we have an ad. Let's open up an instance of the software center and actually let's try to see um, if we can't install something while software is all running in the background. And there should be a, a really good stress test here because we're pretty much opened up probably enough programs here. And let's, let's look for, I don't know, let's open GIMP. Let's see if we can't get, get uh, GIMP installed. So here's GIMP. Uh, let's see how our processes are using. Um, we're about 90% on one core, 60% on another core, uh, down to 40, and just dropped there to 40. We're about two gigs of usage now with all this stuff open. Um, and let's install GIMP here. And I'll uh, type in my password. And we're installing a program. And uh, looks like we're at about, still about just under two gigs of RAM usage and about 60% core usage on both cores. So uh, that's pretty much as intense as you can really get here. I mean, this thing is handling everything really well. Uh, we're still not even getting that hot. We have, uh, let's see, seven tabs open, one of which is playing a video. Um, we have our processes open. We have uh, a genomeric table open. We have our software center opened. Um, that just finished installing. So get out of here. Close that and let's try to open up GIMP now that that's done. Go to graphics, open up GIMP. And it's going to open that up. See how we're doing. We're at still about two gigs of RAM usage, about 70% uh, core usage on one. 70% uh, core usage on both. Um, yeah, about 50-60% now after everything's all loaded up. So um, that's pretty much the the performance test I really would say on this. Uh, everything has been working very well. Um, we have tons of stuff opened. Um, we have, I don't really know how we could stress this anymore. I have all the ads enabled and everything. So uh, let's do my final thoughts and uh, if I think it's worth it and um, all that good jazz af after this part. So let's get to that. All right, so um, this is the last part of the video now. And um, so these are my final thoughts. So that 11-year-old laptop uh, performed really, really above my expectations. Um, I didn't expect to ha it to handle quite as many tasks as it did all at once. So uh, I think it's a great general purpose multitasking machine. Obviously, you're not going to be rendering a video while doing as that much stuff. Um, I'll be surprised if it can even do anything while rendering 1080p video, although I don't really have any way to test that right now because I don't have any video needing to be rendered. But um, for general purpose, uh, I think it's a great, great laptop. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is a lot of people, they want to do a budget laptop. Uh, they just want to browse the web, get on Facebook, do you know, watch some videos, watch Netflix, some stuff like that, and you know, they just want a, a durable laptop that's going to last them a while and that can do all the things that they need to do. And when I tell you how much I paid for this, uh, well, tell me how, no, I, I didn't really pay anything, for, I got that one for free, but when I tell you how much that laptop's worth, how much you can get it for, um, it, it's really going to not can be any contest because it's a really good deal. So, uh, for that Dell Latitude D830, if you go on eBay and get a used I use one of those. You can get it for under a hundred dollars fairly often. You can, if you want a better condition one like the one I have, uh, you can get it for about 120 max. Um, it's got an all aluminum build. It's got tons of ports. It's got a nice big screen that's 16 by 10 ratio, and it can handle everything that you really throw at it for general purpose stuff. I mean, you saw I was editing. Uh, you saw I was editing documents, editing spreadsheets. I was. 
on YouTube, loading up different news websites, loading up Wikipedia, and uh, playing a game, all that stuff, installing software, all, all of that it could handle. Now, bear in mind that I did upgrade that, so I'll tell you the total cost of this build um, uh, in a second, but bear in mind I did upgrade everything uh, in that computer to as high as it can go. I, I put a 120 gig SSD in there, I put four gigs of RAM, which was an upgrade from the two that were in there, and um, uh, it's got a all the most updated uh, drivers that are available for Linux, and I upgraded the OS from Windows XP to Lubuntu. Now, uh, if you were gonna use Windows 10 on this laptop, I would say probably don't get this particular one. Uh, I think the Intel Core 2 Duo is starting to be a little too anemic to really run Windows 10 very well, um, but I mean, if you upgrade everything, you can probably get by and it'll probably be as comparable to a $200 brand new laptop if you were one, run, wanted to run Windows 10 on it as well. So if you wanted to run Windows 10, it'll probably perform as well as a $200 laptop. Now, when you put Linux on it, I think it bumps up a little bit past that. And um, when you take into account the build quality and all that, having Lubuntu on there uh, really pushes it above and beyond what you would expect. Now, the price for this, um, with all the upgrades that I, that are, I have in there and everything, uh, the laptop's probably about $80, so let's just let's call it $90 just to be safe. Let's do it $90. Uh, the RAM, I believe I paid uh, $30 for, maybe $25, $30 for the RAM, so let's say $30. Uh, it's DDR2 RAM, so it's not super expensive, and it was four gig kit, so two, two gigabyte sticks. And uh, so let's say 30, so we're at about $120. And the SSD that I put in there cost me $30 from Best Buy. You can probably get them cheaper, I'm not even 100% sure. Uh, but it's a 120 gig SSD by PNY. You can get it from Best Buy for 30 bucks, that's what I did. And so that puts us about $150. At $150, you are not gonna get a laptop that can perform that well with that good of a build quality. So, do I think it's worth it in 2018? If you're on a very stringent, stringent budget, um, you're going into college, you need a cheap, cheap laptop, you just need to browse the web, maybe watch some Netflix, write your papers, um, you know, do basic tasks like that, maybe some uh, spreadsheets, um, you know, go do your online homework, um, you know, anything like that. It can definitely handle those sorts of tasks. Now, if you're gonna do more intensive stuff, such as video editing, it could probably handle some video editing. Not, uh, you're not gonna be able to multitask that much while doing video editing, but it could probably do some video editing. Uh, CAD works pretty much out of the question. 3D rendering, not gonna really happen. But, if you're a photography student, it's perfectly fine for editing pictures. You can edit pictures and stuff on it as well. Uh, you should be able to do some light multitasking while editing pictures. So, uh, with, with GIMP, or, and in dark tables, you should be able to do some multitasking there. Um, Windows 10 side, you're not going to be able to do nearly as much multitasking. So if you do get a laptop like this, I highly recommend throwing Lubuntu on there. I will do, leave a link in the description to, uh, on how to get Lubuntu. Uh, there's tons of videos on how to install Linux and uh, Lubuntu on your laptop, so go watch one of those videos. But I'm going to link in the comment box below where to get Lubuntu um, and uh, you should be able to follow one of the guides online and uh, take your ISO image and put it on a USB and load it on your laptop. So let me know what you guys think in the comment box below. Uh, if you thought this was interesting, let me know. Oh, I should also touch on one last thing. Gaming on this, you're not gonna be doing any heavy gaming, but this, uh, this particular laptop, the Latitude D830, does have an NVIDIA Quadro in it, and you should be able to do some light gaming on there, even some light 3D stuff, some older 3D stuff. Uh, you could probably do Open Arena, you could do Quake, uh, Doom, Wolfenstein, um, those types of 3D games. Some Maybe some newer indie titles, you should be able to do those as well. But you're not going to be running like Rise of the Tomb Raider or anything crazy like that. Uh, you're pretty much limited to uh, bas you basically basic 3D games or pretty much any 2D game should be able to handle really well. And emulators it should be able to do. So Let me know what you guys think in the comment box below. If you guys thought this was interesting, let me know. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about Linux, uh, let me know. I'm always happy to answer those questions, and um, I respond and read all my comments. So if you have a question, comment, or concern, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.